Hello? Hello? Anybody here? Hello, Monsignor. How are Sarah, you? Sarah, how are you? I'm good. Hello, how's how are you? you? How are you? How's everything? Good. How's everything? It's nice oh, how to see are you? you again. How are you doing? How are things going? Great, Welcome. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so where are we? We are at Il Centro, the first Italian cultural community center in New York City. Okay. On the corner of 18th Avenue and Benson Avenue. Okay. And we're going to be opening very shortly. Okay, now what is this building going to be used for, this center? So it's a cultural community center. It's going to be, um, it's run by the Federation of Italian American Organizations, which Joe and I both work for. Right. Um, so the center itself, first floor, is going to be used as the social atmosphere with um, all the social work that we do for the community. Okay. Um, and then from the second floor up, it's a community center. So it's membership based. There'll be a fitness center, gymnasium, pool, bocce ball courts, event space, and it's going to be used for the entire community to become members and utilize the space. So not just for Italians. Not it's just open for Italians to the whole community. It's open to the entire community. But it's run by the Italian Federation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, who funded this uh, this uh, building? So Joe could speak to that yeah. a little bit. Well, originally this was a dream of many uh, community leaders here, starting with. Uh, Jack Spatolo, who right. was our chairman of the board, Dr. Parisi, and many other people. Then uh, Senator Golden actually was the one that spearheaded the whole thing. He right. put in the first two million dollars, right. which was used to purchase the uh, the land. Uh, then we had several other uh, elected officials that came in with their nice contributions until we were able to put together something like $15 million to start the project. And we started actually construction around the spring, to be exact, April of 2012. Finally, we, get, we were at the point where in, within weeks or months, it's going to be done. It's great to see that it's finally becoming a reality. Absolutely. So now once it is opened and once the doors open, what are some of the activities that would, will be taking place here? So our soccer program that runs for um, uh, kids, the soccer program will be fully run out of here, mm -hmm. uh, which takes place in our gymnasium upstairs. Right up there is the fitness center, so it's a full-size gym. There's a swimming pool. So we'll have all different activities from Italian cooking classes to Italian language classes. The space you're standing in right now will be the space of a senior center for mm. the community. So there'll be senior activities going on in here where they can use different areas. Behind us, um, behind these walls are our office space, and behind that are three classrooms. So there's going to be all different types of classes, um, from tutoring classes to um, cooking classes to language classes. Basically, whatever the community and membership here needs, we will create for them. Well, I know you did a lot of work, and I would like to take maybe a little tour. Absolutely. Please. So, uh, Join I'm us. here Welcome. with uh, Sarah Steinweiss and uh, Joseph Rizzi, and they're going to take us on a little tour of this Italian cultural center right here in Bensonhurst. So Sarah and Joe, what's this big room being used for? This is the fitness center, so it's the second floor of our building. Um, when we're all done, you're going to see the entire room full of all different sorts of exercise machines. Um, there's going to be treadmills, elliptical machines, an entire um, weightlifting section over there. There'll be some more machines behind us. In the corner, there'll be a juice bar and then we're going to be setting up an aerobics room on that. Oh, side. nice. Yes. And then on this floor, as in every floor on our building, we have locker rooms and bathrooms. Great. So everybody who's a member, if they want to come here or the pool, there'll be locker rooms and bathrooms for them on every level. So the after they have the cooking classes and then eating, they'll come up and they'll work out. They'll come up out. here and work out. <laughs> Absolutely. And they, sh they should be doing that before. before <laughs> take, right. a, take a shower because we all also have showers. Part. Okay. And I tell you, it's so bright. I mean, it's it going to be really bright and airy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was part of the architectural design of the building. Um, as we go up, and you'll see there's windows everywhere. Um, it was a big part of... Fiao's um, vision to have this open so the community could see in, we can see out, and we're mm -hmm. part of the community. That was a big part of the vision of the architect, uh, architecture here. So you'll see that the more we go up, the more windows there are. Right. That's and, it, and it's also the concept of having glass going all around, uh, which will be overlooking the uh, multi-purpose room. So if there is a function going on on the other side, 
people could still be here doing their exercise with their state-of-the-art machines and they could see down and they cannot really see up because you want a little There'll bit of privacy. Right, right, right. Yeah, there will be illusion. Right. And all of the machines here all have TVs in them. You could hook your iPads up, right. your iPods. So the state-of-the-art gyms that you are members of would be the same thing here. Right. So yeah. I can suspend my membership and you I can, can come here? You can. You have to come here. <laughs> it is, it is expected. You're going to be one of the first ones <laughs> to, uh, to join. Run on a treadmill, go upstairs and play some basketball, and then swim a little. That's great. No. Shall we continue? Absolutely. Please. Let's go. Wow, this is a big room. It is, it is. This is the gym? This is the gym. We're on the third floor, actually third and fourth floor. Right. As you can see from the space, it's a full court gymnasium. This is where we will have our basketball tournaments. This is where we'll have our uh, indoor soccer program, which the Federation sponsors. It's big enough for a football field. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty <laughs> tremendous. Yes. And this is also, we'll have our basketball, <coughs> soccer, um, any other sports that want to be taking place out of here. And it's also an event space. Wow. So it could be sure. used as an event space mm -hmm. as That's well. nice, you have receptions here. And yes. Yeah. Eventually yeah. we will have uh, partitions so that if you want to have a conference, right. you could have a... Divide uh, them up into smaller groups and right. We could do rooms. concerts. We bought stages. So we'll, have, we'll be able to set up stages if there are concerts or shows mm -hmm. that we want to do in, on this floor as well. So I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah. Let's the go. Let's next. go. This way? Yeah. This way. Well, we're here on the top floor of the Italian Cultural Center. What a view. Look at this. Look at that bridge, the harbor. This is incredible. It's spectacular, isn't it? And look at this pool. Well, this is uh, a pool that starts with three feet on the other side and comes all the way down up to six feet. And what we've seen below was actually the filtration system, um, the mechanical system for the, the pool. And the question is always, why did you put the pool on the, on the top floor? Well, to maximize the uh, space that we have available, because if we put it down in the uh, basement where it normally would have gone, we would not have had, uh, uh, had the uh, uh, space for the, for the parking spaces, which oh, is so required. It, okay. It's required Quiet by now, the law. Right. So we had to do it that way and bring it up on the, fir on the fifth floor. But it turns out to be an excellent idea because right after this, you finish with your splash. Right. You go right, right upstairs to the, uh, uh, to the roof and you could have, especially if it's the summer, take a little bit of uh, sun, have a little barbecue, have a little bit of the juice bar up there. But this is going to be, uh, I think, the best room in the house. I know, it's beautiful. I mean, this view here, the glass, it's so open. And to be swimming in here in the middle of the winter and looking out on a nice sunny day would be beautiful. I mean, I, can, I, don't, think of, I don't know of any health spa or club, in, in, at least in Brooklyn, that's going to be as nice as this. Well, I'm glad you think so, because <laughs> that was the idea at the beginning. We, we wanted to be the first and the best. Well, I think Sarah wanted to be, because we lost it. She said she was going to go out and buy a new bathing suit. She wants to be the first one in the pool. So She's getting ready. <laughs> Now there's a, a rooftop also. Right above us there is a rooftop. Wow. I can only imagine what that have, view is. Oh, spectacular. You could see, see all, all of the city. You, except for the Bronx, you see everything else. So I guess uh, we'll head to the roof next. Let's go. Okay. Unbelievable. I didn't expect it to be this big and to have so many facilities and, uh, you know, uh, it is. It is. And, it's going to be great. Yeah, it is deceiving when we tell people that this is a building with 44,000 square feet and six floors. You really can't tell that that's right. the uh, the size of uh, the you building. You utilize yeah. every space. Every single space. I mean, and you have parking on this underneath. Yes. Wow. Yes. This is. Uh, yeah, there was parking for about 36 cars down below. Wow. I mean, it's a great, great facility. I think. I mean, I think it was worth the wait. Absolutely. I mean, it was a lot of planning and a lot of organization, a lot of fundraising. But I think it's going to be great once it's finished. Yeah. It's, it's the next uh, step is going to be the sustainability of the building, right. which we are making plans with, uh, and Sarah and I have been working hard on right. trying to get membership schedule right. and people that are um, lined up really to rent the space here. So people so will be able to become a member, they'll be able to use all the facilities. All the facilities. <laughs> and then um, 
classes will be included in some membership and then there'll be other classes that you may need to pay in addition but if you're a member it would be discounted very similar to JCC's YMCA's right, right. Mm -hmm. similar type exactly. of membership and then you'll very be able similar. to rent out the rooftop Yes. Everything. And everything is, everything is for rent. And everything the and entire space the is gym, rentable. The gym, I mean, you can have a big yes. event yeah. there as well. Tremendous events. I can't wait for the summertime. I know, it's going to be <laughs> great. We can't wait for next month to right. see what the What's real finished hold. product will be. That's great. Well, Sarah and Joe, thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank and you for be being here. I'll be here for the grand opening and uh, I may even become a member. <laughs> thank you, you so much. Thank, God thank bless. you for coming. Thank okay, you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned. In a few minutes, we'll be going to my kitchen. I'll be preparing <laughs> another great meal. Okay. We'll have a special Good. guest, right, Carlo Cicera. He's the president um, of the Federation just, of the Italian American Organization. <laughs>
Now, do you serve it hot or cold? No, it's served hot. So the leftover, what I did was I just popped it in the um, frying pan for a few minutes. And uh, nice. Was... Now I know where I'll be spending Easter yeah. next year. So you're welcome anytime. I um, love it. So what I do right now, I'm going to throw these sweet potatoes in this bowl, mix it with a little olive oil. I'm, I got some corn here. I chopped up some peppers and onions. I'm going to roast that. And then we're going to put this in the oven for a while. And then we'll add the, the uh, lobster meat at the last minute. We don't want that to cook too too much. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And we have a lot more to do. Hi, welcome back to Breaking Bread and on this episode I'm preparing a sweet potato hash and I have with us the CEO and the President of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. Before we get back to Carlo, I'm going to put this dish together and right now I have our sweet potatoes that I just cubed it up, skinned it, put some olive oil in here to coat it. I'm going to put, mix it a little with a little cinnamon. Now that must give it a nice taste. Oh yes, yeah, give it a nice, a little salt and pepper. I like to put a little extra pepper, make it a little spicy. Mix that salt and pepper in there. And then what I do is I have a pan. Put this right on the pan. We don't have to coat the pan because we have all that olive oil nice. coating the potatoes. Put this here. I'm going to roast so this good. because before I put in the corn, which is already cooked as well as the lobster meat, that only takes a few minutes to get to, you know, hot. Let me Smells put this outstanding. in. You like that smell? Oh boy. So here we have our roasted sweet potatoes. And then now we throw in the corn. Our fresh lobster meat. And all we do now is just mix this together. Right here in the pan, you don't have to dirty another dish. You never think that lobster would go with sweet potatoes. Amazing. Right? And then all I do is cook this for about, about 10, 15 minutes. More, at about 325 degrees. When I roasted the potatoes, it was a little higher. It was about 375 to get them nice and crispy. We'll put this in the oven and uh, in a few moments we'll be able to taste our mm. sweet potato hash. Can't wait. So that's cooking, Carlo. Tell me, what's uh, any major projects going on at the Brooklyn Chamber? So, I, you know, this is a, a busy time of year. We have uh, a couple of big industry-specific trade shows. We just did Brooklyn Designs, okay. which showcased about 50 of Brooklyn's hottest furniture, lighting, uh, pillows, uh, anything designers. Uh, right. We held it in Brooklyn, uh, in Greenpoint, okay. at the new Expo Center. We had thousands of people come by. It was really amazing to see the homegrown talent. And then the end of June, we have Brooklyn Eats. Right, I've been which, to that. And you've been to that, and we want to get you to cook yes, there. Yes, that, that's and a Brooklyn great event. Brooklyn Eats showcases uh, the best of what is made in Brooklyn. Right, you right. know, we hear a lot about uh, made in the U.S., made right. here, but made in Brooklyn is amazing. Right. So you have wines being showcased. You have uh, all different types of foods, pastries, uh, cured everything. I can't believe I mean, that all that 
was made and manufactured here. Right manufactured here in, Brooklyn, grown in Brooklyn, grown in Brooklyn, jobs in yeah. Brooklyn, economic development in Brooklyn, everything happening in Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn was always a manufacturing, you know, borough and, you know, during the war and everything. And, you know, a lot of people think a lot of them have moved out and they have. That maybe a lot have. Of, you know, productivity and production has changed and all. But there's still a lot that goes on in Brooklyn. There are thousands yeah. of small manufacturers that we predict will become the next big companies of tomorrow. That's, that's amazing. Uh, somebody like Brooklyn Winery or Red Hook Winery right. started small is growing. Uh, obviously, we know our friends at Villa Bati who are yes. making their pastries in Brooklyn. And who's the, the chocolate? Um, so we have Jock Torres Jock chocolate. Torres, but right. did you know Brooklyn is now? the chocolate capital of America. I've heard that. I we heard have that. about a dozen chocolatiers in Sunset Park, in Marine Park, uh, at the Navy Yard making incredible chocolates. It's amazing. You could do a chocolate tour of Brooklyn and, and figure it out. All made in Brooklyn, local ingredients, wow. jobs being created. In so Brooklyn is truly a sweet place to live. It's the <laughs> sweetest place on earth. How sweet the it sweetest is. sweetest place on earth. <laughs> and then of course, you know, one of the things we do is we partner with groups across the borough to help them grow. And we're working very closely now with the Federation of Italian American right. Organizations and I was on our old. new Il Centro, which you've been there. I could not believe it. I mean, I heard about it. I was involved when they were doing the early fundraising. Yeah, I remember. And all the work being done. And every year at the parade, the uh, Columbus Day Parade, yes. talking about And this year, we were able to pass we by. Were. and uh, But now to see it inside and to see it almost complete. I mean, it's just amazing. It is a 50,000 square foot labor of love wow. that will be a community and cultural center. To serve the local to community. To serve the community. Not just Italians. To serve everybody, <laughs> but with, with Italian of course. Culture, culture and food. And, and hopefully you will come and do some, in addition to blessing it the day we open, okay. of course, but also doing some Italian cooking there. That but the difference great. there is we will cook overlooking a swimming pool, overlooking the Verrazano Bridge, the Manhattan skyline. We've been doing this for a decade. I know. And well, we finally, see, we see the end of the tunnel. The hard work is, the hard work pay is off. paying off. That's great. Well, we'll be right back to taste our sweet potato hash and a little bit more with Colin. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. I'm going to go right to the oven and take out the sweet potato hash. Mm. Can't wait to try some. <laughs> and Monsignor, it's a pretty healthy. Meal yes, too, I mean right? sweet potatoes are good for you. Right. Corn. Corn and uh, lobster meat. You know, a little high in cholesterol, so but yeah. I mean it's fish. So here we go. So uh, this can be served, as I said. As a side dish, it can be served underneath a piece of fish or a piece of meat. And um, we'll try that in the, just a few, let it cool down a yep. little bit. So tell me, um, how can people join the chamber? Sure, so I look, if you're a business in Brooklyn or anywhere in the city and you wanna do business in Brooklyn, we are your source. So you can go on our website, ibrooklyn.com or just okay. type in Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we have membership levels for everyone. Now you, you know? said the churches, a lot of churches. Yeah, I know so you know, futures in education. Futures, of which you're, you're a, a board member. I love being a board Thank member. Thank you for being on That's our board. It's my honor. And by the way, anyone listening, you should be donating right. a lot of money to futures. Right. It is. I went to Catholic school, uh, and it's an amazing organization because you're helping children yes, yes. who really would not be able to afford the tuition their parents. So. Yes. One of the things we at the Chamber do is we really try and work with nonprofits mm -hmm. like Futures and others. The yeah, Sales um, Media. The Sales Media is a great friend of, of ours and a right. great, I'd say the Sales is one of our best members. Right. Uh, very active and we do a lot together. Right. And we help them meet people and right. they help us and it's a, it's a wonderful partnership. One of the things I think we've done really effectively with the churches and the synagogues and some of the mosques out there is we've, uh, particularly with our health insurance, because we run the Affordable Care Act Navigator right. Program for Brooklyn. Right, 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 right. Because we've been able to work with churches 
and say, hey, if your congregation, your parishioners, don't know how to get health insurance, let us come in and help you. And we can send staff to the churches after church and we could help them sign up and whatever. So it's a great opportunity if you or any of your colleagues would like us to do that, we're always available. That's great, thank you, thank you for But that. yeah, just ibrooklyn.com, uh, any business, nonprofit, anything, even a mom and pop store, right, right. join us and we'll help your business grow. That's great. I want to thank you for being here, but before you go, I'm going to let you taste this right. sweet potato hash. I love it. We'll get a little dish here. I've been thinking about this all morning. Okay. Here we go. It's a big dish, but... Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll make use of it. I know you like to eat. I love to eat. <laughs> I always see you in restaurants. I, I love... know you're working. I know it's I am. Chamber. When I When I go to restaurants, <laughs> it's always to promote the restaurant industry in Brooklyn. I learned that from Marty Marcus when I worked for him. You gotta Marty, try that. Marty, he's the best. Bon appetito. Thank you. Wow. So what do you think? Perfect. Truly perfect. You are a master chef. No, I don't know about you. that. I try oh, my I best. So. If you'd like to try out this recipe at home, here's the recipe. Thank you for joining us here on another episode of Breaking Bread. Carlo, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Outstanding. Thank you. See you next time on Breaking Bread. Thank you once again for joining us as we go into our neighborhoods to meet the members of our church family in Brooklyn and Queens, where they are, in their kitchens and around their tables. We hope we have taught you something today, not only about the dishes we have prepared, but also about the great people who make up our family of faith in our ethnically diverse city. The three F's of life are faith, family, and food. And there is no better way to experience them all than in our kitchens and around our dinner table at the end of each day. You just have to make the time to make it happen. This is Monsignor Jamie Gigantiello, reminding you that together we can continue to build the church by devoting ourselves to community, prayer, the teaching of the apostles, and the breaking of the bread. May God bless you always.